Hi, I'm Keir Simmons, and welcome to the Royal Rundown. Or for today, I'll call it the Royal Runway. That's right, we'll be exploring the fashion of the royal family. We'll show you why what the Windsors wear matters. Each outfit representing much more than what meets the eye. Plus, did you know, before the Duchess of Sussex was part of the royal family, she was a style contributor right here on Today. We'll revisit one of Meghan Markle's segments later in the show. And do you want to dress like a princess? We'll meet a social media influencer recreating royal looks on a budget. But first, why does all this matter? No one knows that better than fashion journalist Elizabeth Holmes. Her New York Times best-selling book, HRH, So Many Thoughts on Royal Style, is a deep dive into the clothing choices of the royals and how each sends an underlying message about their values and interests. Royal style is singular in its power and its purpose. Certainly before this generation, royal women didn't tend to speak. For the most part, their job is to appear. Those images are spread around the world in seconds. And before you know what a royal woman is doing or where she's going or what cause she's supporting, you see what she's wearing. The thing about Queen Elizabeth is that I don't know that she was interested in fashion, but she understood the power of clothes and the role of clothes in her royal duties. She developed this wardrobe that she was sort of known for, right? A working wardrobe of colorful styles. But it was fashion too because she played with colors, she played with textures, she played with different embellishments on her hat, and it turned her into this like brightly colored, delightful grandma figure. Queen Elizabeth set the stage for royal fashion and she made it something that people paid attention to. What Diana did was make royal fashion exciting. She embraced trends in a way that the queen never did. One of my favorite quotes too is from a photographer who said, we didn't even care about the engagement, we just showed up to see what Diana was wearing. And that was the power of it. And Diana hit the stage at the time that the modern media landscape was exploding. So there were glossy fashion magazines, all of a sudden they needed to fill their pages. And here was this beautiful, statuesque, blonde princess who was wearing all this exciting fashion. And I think what was so special about Diana is that she enjoyed fashion, you could tell. So Kate entered the scene and I think she made royal fashion accessible and relatable in a way. From what I understand, Kate was not necessarily super into fashion, but I think she is now. <laughs> and I think you can tell by the spirit of some of what she wears. After she had Prince Louis, she sort of stepped back onto the scene in this really exciting way that to me suggests she has really embraced fashion and is having fun with fashion. There's one dress, it was a shirt dress, and it had a slight slit. And I feel like the old Kate would have sewn up that slit a little bit. She kept it open. And you just saw enough of her leg that everyone was like, whoa, what's happening here? And she looked fabulous. And it only works because what we had come to expect from Kate was so sort of traditional and classic and safe. And so suddenly when she has those moments, it's, I think it's very exciting. Meghan really shook up the royal fashion conversation in a really welcome way. I think she understood better than anyone the power of clothing, the attention of clothing, the language of clothing, because she had worked on a set with a costume designer that's their whole game is to speak through clothes. And what she did, it sounds so silly in hindsight, but it, she modernized it by wearing things like trousers, which is something that every modern woman everywhere wears pants, right? But because Meghan was wearing suddenly like a black suit, you're like, wait, that's not what we usually see from royal fashion. And people who did not um, sort of see themselves in Kate's style, I think perhaps saw themselves in Meghan's. And so what she did was she took the royal fashion audience and made it much bigger. Uh, when royals tour around the world, they use their fashion as sartorial diplomacy, as sort of soft power, and to speak in a way that you don't have to use a voice. And I think there's such power in that, and it takes a lot of work. Back in 
a Queen's Day and then Diana's Day, there would be a whole team that would go and scope out other locations and they would pick out outfits based on the background. And they would study the colors of a country's flag. They would study the country's flowers. One of my favorite pictures of the Queen is when she came to California in 1983. She went to a dinner in a gown covered in California poppies. And you think, wow, somebody somewhere was like, California, the state flower is the poppy. We need a dress. And then they made this beautiful dress that speaks specifically to California. Royal women are also very cognizant of how much to incorporate local dress into what they're wearing. And the queen was really careful with this because you don't want it to look costumey, but you definitely want to look as though you're aware of what people are wearing and dress accordingly. And we saw that brilliantly with Kate in Pakistan. She turned to local designers, she wore local dress. If you see here, she's wearing the color of the uniform of the kids. Can you even believe that? And you know, the day before she was wearing the colors of the Pakistani flag. And I think it's just beautiful. So dressing for the slideshow is a term I came up with on Instagram because it's a nod to the slideshows that fashion websites like to compile, but it's thinking about not just a single look on its own, but a sequence or a cadence of looks. Kate has stepped out for Trooping the Color in a bright green design, and then a couple days later at Garter Day, she wore white, and then at Royal Ascot, she wore red. And you think, oh, red is like a very bold color, and you know, for Ascot in the past, she's worn softer pastel so why would she be wearing red? But it's because the green, white, and red together make up the colors of the Welsh flag. And for her first time doing all these engagements as the Princess of Wales, I thought that was a really lovely nod. Royal fashion has changed in a number of ways. I think first and foremost, it's changed because it is now shoppable in a way that it never used to be. When Queen Elizabeth was a young queen, she wore a few off the rack pieces, but mostly it was bespoke. It was custom for her. And so you could sort of admire royal fashion without taking part in it. By the time Catherine became the Duchess of Cambridge, suddenly e-commerce made it possible to shop what she was wearing. And then you could feel like you were having a part of it in a really sort of special way. So repeating outfits is a big part of the royal fashion conversation. I think repeating fashion is a sign that these are working wardrobes, that these are pieces that they invest in. And so there'll be headlines like, Kate's worn this co coat four times. And it's like, well, every woman has a coat in her closet that she's worn like 40 times probably, hopefully. But it makes them seem, I think, more human in a really helpful way. In this moment, the Princess of Wales is the one to watch. She joined the royal family over a decade ago. Since then, her style choices have changed the conversation. And what is known as the Kate effect began. Molly Hunter has more. The Princess of Wales has been called a fashion inspiration, icon and influencer. She's simple but elegant, understated but regal, accessible but elevated. The princess is renowned for her powerful impact on fashion, known as the Kate Effect. The shopping stampede began with the blue Issa dress that Kate wore for her engagement announcement in 2010, which sold out in 24 hours. The trend continued with the Reese dress she wore to meet the Obamas at Buckingham Palace in 2014. An unprecedented demand for that dress caused Reese's website to crash, and sales for British shoe designer Camilla Elphick went off the scale, one style selling out after Kate was spotted wearing them. Her choices are even credited with giving a boost to the economy. It has been said that Kate has a billion dollar effect on the British economy, and that's because she has really helped to promote not only British luxury brands, but brands across the world. While the princess's love is known for British designers like Jenny Packham and Alexander McQueen, responsible for her wedding dress, red carpet stunners, and powerhouse suits, she also frequents more accessible brands like Barber and LK Bennett. She mixes luxury looks with affordable accessories like this Alexander McQueen gown paired with Zara earrings. And although she's next in line to be queen, Kate is not above recycling some of her beloved looks. Serving as a model of sustainable fashion, she balances between the glamorous and down to earth giving people around the globe access to her look. In 2016, Kate appeared on the cover of British Vogue's 100th anniversary issue, surprising everyone with her casual look, jeans in the countryside. 
Another reason we love Kate's style, the similarities to that of her mother-in-law, Princess Diana, the previous Princess of Wales. For the royal family, what one wears to an event is almost as important as the occasion itself. And from coronations to royal affairs, we can always count on Kate to deliver a show-stopping look. Even her husband, Prince William, agrees. And the legacy extends to the next generation. There's growing interest in the clothing that her children are sporting. As the princess's role continues to evolve, so does her style, and we'll be watching the future queen and her style evolution every step of the way. We can't wait to see what Kate wears next. After the break, Princess Diana in the spotlight. We revisit some of her most iconic looks. Plus, Meghan Markle fashion contributor? We look back at her time at Today, sharing the best looks for the summer. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Royal Rundown. We now step into the shoes of the late Princess Diana, who knew the power of fashion. Many of her outfits still popular today. E! News' Erin Lim Rhodes has more. Take a look. Princess Diana's fashion legacy continues to reign supreme. There's no doubt that the royal left her mark on the world, redefining the role of a princess and shaping pop culture. She also cemented herself as a style icon with coveted looks that have stood the test of time. From chic athleisure to that jaw-dropping revenge dress, here's a look at Princess Diana's fashion moments that we're still obsessed with. And now more on Princess Diana with a look back at her iconic style thanks to an exclusive exhibit held just down the street at Kensington Palace. I got the chance to tour the exhibit back in 2017 and let me tell you, seeing some of her wardrobe in real life as they say is something I will never forget. Princess Diana, the most famous and photographed woman in the world. She balanced really well the whole idea of capturing press attention, really speaking loudly through her clothes to absolutely enormous audiences. Diana, her fashion story, celebrates her style with 25 dresses. It charts her fashion journey from shy teenager to international icon. It includes the dress she wore to the White House dancing with John Travolta to the dress she wore on the cover of Harper's Bazaar. There's a dress that people will remember because of what happened when she was wearing it. She famously danced in the White House with John Travolta wow. and it was one of those amazing moments. Said Cyrus, along with his wife Catherine Walker, designed many of the dresses in this exhibit. Wherever she went, people wanted to see her as a British princess. She was, after all, the future queen. Uh, a British ambassador. These were, after all, work clothes. The Versailles Palace was the inspiration for this dress the princess wore in 1994. But what did strike me was the way in which the light came through. What we designed was something which we felt would show the princess shining through a frame. This is a really poignant one. Also on display, some of her favourite dresses she auctioned off for charity just two months before her death. Like this Versace dress, worn just after she separated from the Prince of Wales. She's saying, I, I've separated, I'm my own person. She was asserting her independence, but she was also, I think, by this point, had really solidified and understood and stamped her own style. The garments that we see here are testament to, um, to her legacy in many ways. These these garments then became mementos of the princess. What legacy did she leave for the fashion world? The princess is hugely relevant. On a personal level, so many people all around the world somehow still see a piece of themselves in the princess. A voice that was silenced way too early. While that exhibit is now closed, Kensington Palace's largest exhibit ever Crown to Couture is currently open to the public until October. Coming up, diamonds, rubies, emeralds. Oh my, 
Our very own Savannah Guthrie got a chance to try on all the royal jewels earlier this year. Plus, royal fashion on a budget, the social media influencer who recreates Kate's looks for everyday wear after the break. Welcome back. The fascination with royal attire is not just about the clothes. Remember, we are talking about queens and princesses here, and everyone has a royal crown. Oh, many crowns. Well, our very own Savannah Guthrie wanted in on the action. Watch as she gets a taste of what royal jewels shopping is all about. Royals and fashion go hand in hand. Throughout the ages, royals have been style influencers and trendsetters. These days, Catherine, the Princess of Wales, wears that crown. But every time she wears a new outfit, it immediately sells out. For royals, what one wears to an event is almost as important as the occasion itself. Hats are a must for royal races. Then there are the royal weddings, the annual Trooping the Colour, state banquets and the opening of Parliament, crowns, tiaras and jewels. For the King and Queen's coronation, the crown jewels take centre stage. Important pieces for the big day include the imperial state crown and the royal scepter with a cross, all made or modified by Garrod, who reigned for 164 years as the first official crown jeweler. Wow, I feel well, royal already. <laughs> this room was actually named um, after Queen Mary with her kind permission. It's Queen really Mary would come here. Yes. Well, so you've had a lot of royalty over the years. Yes, we have. So on coronation day, we will see jewels that were designed here. Yes. Tell me about them. Okay, so we have, um, we actually have a um, original artwork here of Queen Mary's contour crown. So that was designed and made um, by Gowraj for Queen Mary in 1911. And Queen Consort Camilla is going to actually she is. wear she, this, this is crown. The crown that she's going to be wearing. What about the imperial crown? So the imperial state crown, that was remade totally by Garrod in 1937. Well, I feel very bedazzled <laughs> here. So you're looking at some replicas of um, tiaras, historical tiaras that Garrod have made. Can we look at them? Yes. Oh, yeah, of course we can. Let me just see. Oh, what do we think? Perfect on you. <laughs> You have the perfect hair for a tiara. Oh, good. I'm so glad. That's how I, I've just been going my whole life waiting for the right tiara. <laughs> There's also another iconic creation to their credit. You're, you're sporting some beautiful bling as well, and I feel like I've seen this before. A beautiful example of this is uh, Princess of Wales' engagement ring, um, which was formerly worn by the previous Princess of Wales, Diana. Hers is obviously a little bit larger than this one. But <laughs> this is pretty large. But this one's pretty, pretty special this as well. This will do. <laughs> Someone who has worn many royal jewels over the last few years, Meghan Markle. As a working royal, the Duchess of Sussex dazzled with her fashion-forward looks. But before she joined this family, she was a member of the Today Show family, a Today Show contributor giving her take on the up-and-coming fashion trends. Can you believe it? Here's a look back at one of her segments from 2015, a year before she even started dating Prince Harry. Meghan Markle is back. She plays the always fashionable Rachel Zane on USA's hit series Suits, but she's multi-talented. She also runs her own fashion and lifestyle website called The Tig. Meghan, good morning. Good, good to see morning. you. Good to see you too. We've got four great trends, yes. and we're going to show how the celebrities wear them and then how the rest of us can wear Absolutely. them. Absolutely, and they're all pretty easy to pepper into your wardrobe, so it should be fun. Okay, so the first one is matching print Tops and bottoms, we've seen this on Taylor Swift, Michelle yeah. Obama, Carrie Washington. What's the key to wearing the trend? Oh, it's fantastic. And it's actually really doable, right? So you want to look at matching prints, and they can be subtle. So you can see as here has the vertical print on the bottom, horizontal up top. And then you keep it really edgy, fresh, and modern with like a nice structured sandal. But it's simple to pepper in. And then a little sliver of skin. I don't know. If you want to do it, you can certainly uh, dare to bear just a touch. Well, yeah, Yasmin looks great. You don't have to have the crop top to do this look. You you definitely don't have to. Now, everyone from Gap to Chanel is doing this sort of look, and she pulls it off so well, but you don't have to. You can just have one fluid silhouette with the matching pieces, and I think you'll look really on trend. They're it's not matchy matchy, though. They complement each other, but exactly. this horizontal versus vertical, is that the key? Yes, and so it's subtle, right? And it's an easy way to keep it looking really on trend and comfortable, too, right? Yeah. I think we can all put something in our wardrobe like that and, and look great at any summer barbecue. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we looks beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Our next trend is white on white. Let's bring our model out. This is Heidi. We've seen this on Julianne Hough, Lupita yep. Nyong'o, Kim Kardashian West, head to toe white. It's so 
perfect for summer. I love it. It's just effortlessly chic. And the way to do this really is you want to play with little subtle accents, right? You can see she has a great crisp white button down and then adds texture with the skirt that has a sort of see-through element and a pop of color with her clutch, simple gold bangles. I love this look. It's and the round sunglasses, is that the new shape we're supposed to be wearing? It is such a shape. It is the most on-trend thing. And they're like easy and cool and also sort of a nod to the 70s vibe, which we'll see in one of the other looks coming up. I love it. Heidi, thank you so much. Our next trend is gingham. Now, all summer long we see the guys in this here around the Today Show, but ladies <laughs> yes. love it too. Reese Witherspoon, Dakota Johnson, yes. Victoria Justice, and now our model Peyton. Well, so that's the thing. I mean, you would see gingham in menswear for as long as you can remember. And now, remember how plaid in the fall was such a trend? Yeah. So this is going to be your summer plaid, so to speak. It's easy. You can wear it as a skirt or a dress, as she's doing. But you could also just have a great button-down tucked into a pencil skirt or some some shorts, and you're perfect for summer. It is um, it is not Dorothy from Wizard of Oz. No. It is much chicer these days. When we come back, TikToker Morgan Irwin shares her secrets for dressing just like Kate Middleton in a few inspired looks. Welcome back. The royal family's fashion has inspired trends around the world for decades. But for one viral TikToker outside Baton Rouge, Louisiana, more than 4,600 miles from the palace here in London, it's the timelessness of Kate, Princess of Wales's fashion choices that draws her in. And she's gained her own royal size audience, showing women everywhere how to dress like a princess without having access to the privy purse. Here's Molly Hunter with more. Welcome to a series that I like to call Kate Middleton style on an Amazon budget. I don't know if y'all are the same, but I am obsessed with her. Social media style maven Morgan Freeman has always been drawn to the grace and elegance of the Princess of Wales. I vividly remember when they got engaged and she was wearing that navy blue dress. And I was 12 at the time. That's where it just like clicked for me. I was like, I have to dress like this woman. I want to carry myself like her. But it probably wasn't until these past two years that I got to the age where I was like, you know what, this is what I love. And now Kate's influence continues on one of the biggest days of Morgan's life. I'm getting married in September and I bought the first wedding dress that I tried on because I had a very distinct vision in my mind, um, Kate's wedding dress. Her love for Kate's style has ignited Morgan's own fashion following. I love it! I am actually so in love with this. With over 3 million likes on TikTok, where she reimagines the royal styles for less. I cannot get over this $29 dress. There are girls that are on the younger side that don't want to follow fast trends. Then there's women that are 60, 70 years old and they're like, thank you so much, you've saved my wardrobe. And I feel like I've created this really warm environment for women. I don't think y'all are ready for this. The star of the show, this maroon coat with the faux fur. I'm speechless. Let's put it on. The most viral look is definitely the maroon coat. It's a timeless piece that I feel like people can pull out around the holidays when it's cold year after year. When Kate comes out, it's like, I'm just waiting to see what she's wearing because I'm hopping on my phone to see if I can find something similar while saving people money. Her secret to creating a high-end royal look for less, it's pay attention to the details. Say a stripe doesn't align at the seam, to me that is like a big no-no. It just doesn't look cohesive. It doesn't look expensive. Um, another thing is like hardware and buttons on clothing, even if it's a good silhouette. If there's a cheap button or a cheap zipper, I'm like staying away from that. I spend time, time, time digging. I've <laughs> regrettably spent probably hours of the night until 3 a.m. like scouring the internet. Like I know I can find trousers that look just like hers. I only share if I feel 100% confident, like this is a good outfit to put into the world because I want people to be happy with what they're getting and feel good in that clothing. But it isn't just the princess's wardrobe that this royal watcher is drawn to. Kate embodies is kind of like a poised power. So I feel like through her clothing, but then also just her, her energy, it's like this lady seems so delicate and like, royal but at the same time like so strong and bold. Morgan's crowning achievement 
helping other women feel confident with wardrobes that may never go out of style. It like sparks this like childlike joy in me to put an outfit together. I love to feel that for myself, to feel so good in an outfit when you walk out the door like, oh my gosh, like I feel like I'm on cloud nine right now because my outfit is so like banging. But doing that for other people is like tenfold. And there you have it, your primer on royal style. I hope we've answered all of your questions and you've learned a little something about how each fashion choice does more than meets the eye. We can't wait to see what the royal family wears next and we'll be following every step of the way. Thank you for joining me this half hour. I'm Keir Simmons. See you next time on Today or Day. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.